do you use? Spoilers. 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 I like that word. I thought you might. Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of Doctor Who videos. But before we get on to the main video, let me just give you a little bit of background about this series. When going through my Did You Know series, as I have quite a few videos planned for the future, I noticed that some of my videos tended to be more like lists, not top tens or rankings, but more trivia about a specific subject. But it got me thinking that this could actually be a series of videos in its own right, so I present to you a brief history, a series of videos giving you a chronological summary of various things within the Doctor Who universe. Now, due to the ever-expanding nature of the universe's narrative, I will say that the content of these videos is what is presently known at the time of recording. And subsequently, this means that in future, these videos may contain information that is incorrect, has been retconned, or is missing information entirely. Hence why this video is part one. As I continue to make the series, I will make further update videos in future, but I will only do so when I've got enough content for a full video, rather than making an update every time there is a little piece of new information out. Any new or updated information will be included in a pinned comment below until such a time that there is enough information for me to make a new video. Now, obviously in this series, I will be talking about stories, whether it's television, audio, comics, or novels. So spoilers are inevitable. However, as I I would always urge people to go out and watch, read, or listen to these things themselves, I will only be giving you condensed versions of specific plots or events. After all, I'm only here to give you a brief history. Now just before I begin the main thrust of this video, I will just say that I'm going to refer to this incarnation as both the War Doctor and just the Doctor for the sake of ease. As I'm sure many of you will know, he never went by this name himself, only choosing to re-adopt the name Doctor once at the end of his life, at which point he forgot doing so. However, in explaining all of this following information, it simply makes it easier for me to refer to him using either term. But now we've got all that out of the way, let's jump in to our first proper video. One of my favourite incarnations of the Doctor is the War Doctor, as he represents a very dark time in the Doctor's life, and much of his life is still as yet unexplored. But for now, here's what we do know. So I present to you my brief history of the War Doctor. So, like many incarnations of the Doctor, the War Doctor's narrative life does not begin with his regeneration. Indeed, in the Doctor's past, there have been fair mentions of future incarnations and even appearances. According to the novel A Big Hand for the Doctor, the first Doctor would occasionally have premonitions of his future incarnations. In the big finished story The Plague of Dreams, the first Doctor learns that forces from the future, aka the Daleks, were interfering with his history in order to stop him becoming an incarnation, aka the War Doctor, that would play a role in a future conflict, a.k.a. the Last Great Time War. There's a war, and our enemies have been interfering with your timeline. You'll be heading to the South Pole. You're going to die there. Hardly a very attractive proposition. No, not very. When you say die, do you mean- Oh, you'll go on. Another you. <laughs> the new you. And he'll be useful in this war of yours, will he? No, not him. Or even the him that follows. You will have lots of new faces before you become the man we need. The First Doctor was later referred to as the Doctor of War by testimony in Twice Upon a Time, showing him his future incarnations, including the War Doctor. He's the Doctor When Ace was sent into the Seventh Doctor's mind in the novel Time Worm Revelation, she discovered a room with 13 cubicles, seven of which were empty, whilst the remaining six contained shadowy white figures representing the Doctor's future incarnations. The Seventh Doctor would later go on to state, rather controversially, in the big Finnish adaptation of Cold Fusion, that he remembers teaming up with all of his other 12 incarnations to save Gallifrey. It occurred to me that some of the equations we came up with today will come in very handy when all 13 of us team up to save Gallifrey. Yes, and that reminds me of a future reference. When there are two of us... We can't both reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. The Eighth Doctor would later have many near misses with regenerating. However, by the time the last Great Time War began, he could feel his regeneration approaching, as mentioned in the short story Museum Piece. I changed, came the reply, as if he saw the train of thought on the warrior's face. And I will again. But there are some things I have to do first. And in the big Finnish story, The Conscript, Cardinal Alistra threatened to shoot the Doctor, believing she would have better luck convincing his next incarnation to fight in the Time War. Commander, give me your staser. So what? You're going to shoot me? Yes. 
but nowhere too vital. Just enough to trigger your next regeneration. Since this doctor has made his position clear, I may have better luck with the next one. Of course, everything had to come to a head soon enough. And finally, on card, with the help of the Sisterhood, and according to the novelization of Day of the Doctor, some dry ice, lemonade, and the placebo effect, the War Doctor finally came into being, as seen at the end of Night of the Doctor. Although he decided to reject the name Doctor, and according to several sources, such as the short story The Stranger from the Heroes and Monsters collection, went with The Warrior for a time. This incarnation of the Doctor differed drastically from the others, taking the name The Warrior to his heart to fight in the Time War. The Sontarans described the Doctor as leading the Time Lords into battle. Legend says he led the battle in the last great Time War. And was later given titles such as The Butcher of Skull Moon. With the event having been described in the novelization of Day of the Doctor as a massacre, with the War Doctor taking command of the slaughter. Even the Daleks became frightened of him, more so than before, with Engines of War listing off their fearful names for him, such as the Predator of the Daleks. Dalek Killer, The Great Scourge, The Living Death, and The Executioner. Following his regeneration on Khan, one of the first known instances of the War Doctor fighting in the Time War was shown in the comic The Clockwise War. Stated to be the worst day of the Time War, the Doctor formed an alliance with the Sisterhood of Khan to defeat the Moorland Toa of the Seventh Sky on the Dorian Nexus. The comic story Ambush from the Daleks book showed the War Doctor alongside fellow soldier Petrella joining a fleet of battle TARDISes in an attack against the Daleks. In the comic story The Lost Dimension, the War Doctor was shown to be trapped along with seven of his other incarnations after the Void began to devour the universe. However, forming a plan with his other incarnations, he escaped and helped restore the universe to normal. As the war continued, according to the short story A Prologue in the Shakespeare Notebook, the War Doctor fought the Horde of Travesties, the Armies of Meanwhiles and Never Wers, and the Scaro Degradations, and according to the novel of Day of the Doctor also bore witness to the seven deaths of Davros. The short story The Third Wise Man from the Twelve Angels Weeping Collection reveals that the War Doctor also fought the Nightmare Child, a new type of Dalek made by Davros, with the novelization of Twice Upon a Time later also revealing that he was fighting not only to prevent its rise, but also for it to be aware of its non-existence. However, the Nightmare Child soon became uncontrollable, and it was Davros himself who actually defeated it, seeming perishing in the process. However, before his death, he called the War Doctor to gloat, with the War Doctor attempting to save him, but being unsuccessful and believing Davros dead. As shown in various The Eleventh Doctor Year Two comics, the War Doctor teamed up and formed a pact with the Master to fight alongside each other. However, due to the intervention of Alice Oberfune, a companion of the Eleventh Doctor having travelled back into the Time War in the Master's TARDIS, the Alliance ended when the Master's actions created a paradox which resulted in his regeneration. But also the War Doctor himself caused another paradox which caused him to forget these events and his time allied with the Master. At this point, the events of the first War Doctor Big Finish series, Only the Monstrous, take place, with the first story The Innocent seeing the War Doctor getting caught up in protecting the planet Keska. After crash landing on Keska and being nursed back to health by a Keskan named Rejoice and waking up from a coma caused by the crash, he tried to retire from the Time War, becoming something of a hermit. However, his life of war caught up with him. Initially, he helped the Cascans build a force field to protect them against the Talians in a war of their own, after which he refused the summons from Cardinal Lystra to return to Gallifrey. However, in the second story, The Thousand Worlds, he was forcibly drawn back to Gallifrey and discovered that the Daleks had helped the Talians bypass the force field with the help of fellow Time Lord, Ceratrix. Ceratrix believed he could end the Time War by making an alliance with the Daleks, and so the War Doctor once again returned to Keska and reunited with an older Rejoice to defeat them both. Of course, as the third story, The Heart of Battle, reveals, the Daleks deceived and betrayed Ceratrix, and whilst the War Doctor was able to defeat them both, his victory came at the cost of more deaths, including Rejoice's. Reluctantly re-accepting his life of war, the War Doctor continued to fight, leading into the events of the second War Doctor Big Finish series, Infernal Devices. In the first story, Legion of the Lost, the War Doctor became involved in events on the planet Vildar to destroy the Annihilator, a Dalek weapon capable of erasing entire races from time and history whilst preserving the timelines, meaning although a race would never have existed, people would still remember them. The 
War Doctor was successful in destroying the Annihilator, but in doing so was knocked unconscious and presumed dead. Taken to the planet Aldris, where dead Time Lords were being resurrected to continue fighting in the Time War by the Technomancers, the War Doctor discovered that the native Valdarians of Vildar were being sacrificed in order to revive the dead Time Lords, with a small part of the Technomancer's masters, the Horned Ones, being placed inside each revived Time Lord. With the help of a fellow Time Lord named Collis, the War Doctor succeeded in defeating the Technomancers using the Annihilator, which still existed even after its destruction due to being kept in the crypt of non-time to wipe the Technomancers and the Horned Ones from time itself. In the second story, A Thing of Guile, after escaping from Aldris, the War Doctor was apprehended by Cardinal Elystra, who informed the Doctor he was to be arrested as a war criminal, and effectively placed under Elystra's command through the use of an Archron leash. Along with Elystra and fellow Time Lords Jarad and Solex, the War Doctor discovered that the Daleks were retro-engineering themselves back into Carleds in order to gain a new insight into the Time War. Using the Anima device, another weapon of the Omega Arsenal but not of Time Lord origin, Elystra manages to secure their escape but in doing so allowed the War Doctor to free himself from the Archon Leash and escape in his TARDIS. However, Elystra, predicting the War Doctor would take any opportunity to leave, programmed his TARDIS to travel into the very heart of the explosion created by the Anima device, to a place called the Neverwen, itself another weapon in the form of a place created outside normal space-time. There, the Doctor helped some soldiers fight an enemy until an effect in the Neverwen, known as time phasing, which caused individuals to be evolved through their timelines in rapid succession, revealed that the War Doctor had in fact been assisting retro-evolved Carleds fight primitive Time Lords. Eventually, however, in the third story, The Neverwen, Elystra catches up with the War Doctor and orders him to dismantle the Neverwen so that it could be used in conjunction with the Anima device to destroy Skaro. Again. Instead, the War Doctor stopped the Neverwen from working at all by attempting to use it to create a state of people where the Daleks and the Time Lords were both nothing more than peaceful farmers. Unfortunately, however, conflict between the two species was so deeply ingrained that no matter what, they still ended up fighting, and Elystra made way to continue with her original plans. However, the War Doctor was successful in modifying the Neverwen so that Elystra's plan would always be a failure, and in the grand scheme of things, he told her that there was no way of knowing what side effects her plan might have had on a wider universe. Here we take a bit of a break from Big Finish and return to the land of graphic literature. Because at this point in the War Doctor's life, the events of the comic Four Doctors takes place. On the planet Marinus, the War Doctor assisted the Vord in fighting and defeating the Daleks. However, as the Time War had turned them into formidable beings, the Vords feared that should the Time Lords win the war, they might regress the Vords' development back to pre-war times, and ask the War Doctor's help in preventing this from happening. Not willing to make promises he couldn't keep, the War Doctor offered to act as intermediary between the Vord and the Time Lords after the war. Unfortunately, in the Doctor's future, this did not go according to plan. But that's another story. Now we once again return to Big Finish with the third War Doctor series, Agents of Chaos. The first story of which, the Shadow Vortex, has the War Doctor sent to Earth by Lystra to stop a Dalek agent named Lara Zarnis from using the titular Shadow Vortex, another Dalek weapon with the purpose of destroying Earth in 1961, so that the Doctor might never meet his companions and be erased from time altogether. The War Doctor was successful, but returning to the Time War found that both Elystra and the Dalek Time Strategist had been kidnapped by the Sontarans, with their aim being to ransom each person back to the two sides in an effort to join the Time War. As the second story, The Eternity Cage reveals, the War Doctor and fellow Time Lord Helena used the stealth ship to lead a platoon of Time Lords to the planet Ravidia, home to several Sontaran strongholds. However, the War Doctor realised that these Sontarans not only wished to enter the Time War, but also become a third front, and the hostages were bait for a trap. Preventing the Sontarans' intended use of the Eternity Cage, a stasis environment of Time Lord technology used to hold prisoners, the War Doctor escaped in a battle TARDIS with Elystra and Helena. However, it was revealed by Elystra that Helena was a traitor. Before the War Doctor could act, however, Helena tried and failed to kill the War Doctor by ejecting him into space. 
Luckily, he was saved by Alistra, but in the ensuing panic, Helena was able to escape with Alistra hostage into the Battle TARDIS. The final story, The Eye of Harmony, picks up here, with the War Doctor discovering Alistra and Helena in the Battle TARDIS's Eye of Harmony chamber, just as a Dalek Time Assault Squad arrives in the ship. Using the Battle TARDIS's reconfiguration system, the War Doctor destroyed the chamber to stop the Daleks, and convinced Helena to detonate a Dalek Dark Matter bomb to give the Battle TARDIS enough energy to materialise in real time, which she did so, but at the cost of her own life. Unfortunately, after escaping to a space station, the War Doctor and Alistra were captured and sent to the Daleks as a peace offering, but due to the War Doctor's timely intervention, they avoided being sent to the Daleks by flying the Battle TARDIS to the planet Beltox. We now move on to the final Big Finish War Doctor series, Casualties of War. Beginning with the story Pretty Lies, it begins with the War Doctor and Elystra having escaped capture and, once again, crash landing on the planet Beltox and meeting time-travelling journalist Shandell. Through Shandell, the War Doctor and Elystra learn that the Daleks were due to arrive soon, with Shandell being there to cover the invasion. However, with his help, they manage to repel the invaders, but at the cost of Shandell's life. The War Doctor and Alistra took Shandell's time shift to the planet Grend, the ship having already had its destination preset, hoping to contact Gallifrey. After leaving Alistra on Grend to contact the Time Lords, the following story, The Lady of Obsidian, tells of the War Doctor having learned of the Lady of Obsidian from Shandell's files, and travels to the Obsidian Nebula to find her. Finding her, the War Doctor is surprised to find that the Lady is in fact Leela. However, due to her being struck by a Disruptor Dalek early in the Time Law, she was displaced from time and space until she reformed, with her memories altered to include all of her possible timelines. Because of this, she was confused, remembering dying but not dying, living on Gallifrey but having never lived, and more importantly, knowing the Doctor, but having never met him. Luckily, the War Doctor was able to convince her of their past together, and her true timeline, and with her help prevented the Unlived, a species which existed in timelines which never happened, from entering the main universe. Meanwhile, Elystra had been successful in contacting the Time Lords, and the War Doctor finally reunited with his own TARDIS, returned Elystra and Leela back to Gallifrey. However, as revealed in the third story, The Enigma Dimension, Upon arriving on Gallifrey, Leela began to feel a great sadness and see the shadows of Daleks. The War Doctor and Elystra discovered that a force from another dimension, known as the Enigma, was communicating through Leela, and subsequently, under the orders of the Dalek Time Strategist, it erased the Time Lords from history. Managing to escape in his TARDIS, the War Doctor, Elystra, and Leela travelled to the Enigma's own dimension, discovering that the Enigma was being forced by the Daleks to do their bidding, and through emotions had used Leela to warn the Doctor of the Daleks' plan. Elystra wished to use the Enigma to restore the Time Lords and wipe out the Daleks, However, the War Doctor, wishing to bring an end to the Time War completely, asked the Enigma to wipe out both the Daleks and the Time Lords from existence. However, after reasserting its own control, the Enigma decided that the Time Law was none of their concern to meddle in, and so after the Daleks and the TARDIS, along with the War Doctor, Elystra, and Leela left its dimension, it restored the Time Lords. At this point, the War Doctor engaged in several minor skirmishes. The previously mentioned short story, The Stranger, from the Heroes and Monsters collection, reveals that the War Doctor travelled back to Gallifrey during the first segment of the Time War to stop the Daleks wiping out Gallifrey and children. The comic The Bidding War, published as the final story in Titan Comics' The Ninth Doctor series, told of the War Doctor's opposition to Cardinal Elystra's idea to recruit the great vampires into the Time War, trying to prevent a portal being opened into their universe. The novel Engines of War, which we'll return to in a moment, reveals that late in the war, the War Doctor was ordered by Rassilon to find the Master, who had fled from the Time War. However, the War Doctor was unable to find any traces of his old enemy. The comic The Whole Thing's Bananas from the Many Lives of Doctor Who showed the War Doctor enlisting the help of Dorian Maldivar to destroy the weapon factories on Villengard prior to the Daleks taking control of them, eventually using a molecular fruit bomb to transform the factories into palm trees, creating a banana grove. Now comes the Doctor's penultimate battle, as told in the events Engines of War. Upon leading a flotilla of battle TARDISes into the Tantalus Eye in the Tantalus Spiral to engage the Daleks, the War Doctor crash lands, what a surprise, on the planet Moldox. After meeting Cinder, a member of the Resistance on Moldox, she joins him in investigating a Dalek base, discovering a new breed of Dalek, the Temporal Weapons Dalek. 
Possessing weaponry capable of removing any living being from existence, they also discovered a group of Daleks known as the Eternity Circle were building a DMAT weapon on Moldox, intending to fire it at Gallifrey, effectively wiping the planet from the time and history in order to win the Time War. Returning to Gallifrey to warn the Time Lords, Rassilon decided to use a weapon known as the Tear of Isha, the goal being to wipe the Daleks from the Tantalus Eye, but with the collateral damage that would see all life in the area die in the process. Naturally, the War Doctor was against Rassilon's plan, so after escaping arrest by Rassilon, they were pursued by Time Lord Cardinal Carlax. However, Carlax's TARDIS came under attack from Dalek stealth ships, and in the process, Carlax himself, severely injured on the verge of regenerating, was saved by the War Doctor and placed into the TARDIS's Zero Room to recover. After discovering Rassilon's full plan, the War Doctor and Cinder travelled to the Death Zone on Gallifrey. There they found Barusa, who Rassilon had retro-evolved into a possibility engine, capable of seeing all possible timelines and events from the Time War, so that Rassilon may choose the best possible outcomes. However, this came at the cost of Barusa's own sanity and life, as the process left him constantly regenerating through his different incarnations and severely mentally traumatized. However, in the end, after stealing Barusa, returning to the Eye and escaping capture by the Daleks, who wished to turn the War Doctor into a new type of Dalek known as the Predator Dalek, the War Doctor and Cinder were confronted by Carlax, newly regenerated, who attempted to take the War Doctor back to Gallifrey. However, predicting Carlax's deception, the War Doctor set the TARDIS to demon materialize around Carlax, who was left behind in the middle of the Eternity Circle, who promptly exterminated him. Unfortunately, before the dematerialization process completed, Carlax, enraged by the War Doctor's actions, attempted to shoot him. However, Cinder sacrificed herself for the War Doctor by taking the shot. And the War Doctor was later seen in the comic The Bidding War, cradling her body in the TARDIS, distraught by her death. Following Cinder's death, the War Doctor took Barusa to the Tantalus Eye, and whilst he contemplated the opportunity of using Barusa to create a timeline in which Cinder survived, he ultimately decided that in Cinder's memory, and knowing it would have been her wish, used Barusa to wipe the Daleks from the eye. This event also cost Barusa his own life, however he finally saw this as a release from his immortality and pain which Rassilon had caused him. Returning to Moldox, the War Doctor found Cinder's home and buried her alongside the remains of her mother, father and brother, erecting a grave marker and paying his respects to them. At this moment, looking up into the Tantalus Eye, after seeing so much death and destruction for so long, the War Doctor decided enough was enough. He vowed to put an end to the last great time war, once and for all, with the promise, no more. At this point, of course, came the events of Day of the Doctor, leading not just to an end of the War Doctor's long fight, but the end of the last great time war itself, but also his life. Now, you might think this is the end of the War Doctor's story, but just how he was mentioned or appeared before his regeneration on Khan, he was also mentioned and seen after his death. Choosing to make no secret of his actions during the last Great Time War, the Doctor instead decided to hide who he was during that time. However, whilst he did attempt to forget about him, the story, Nothing O'Clock, later revealed that he did sometimes think about his war incarnation, and as revealed in The Husbands of River Song, he confided his existence to her. In the comic, Weapons of Past Destruction, when the Ninth Doctor's memories are forcibly looked into, he is forced to relive his memories of the Time War, including those of both his Eighth and War incarnations. In the comic Sin Eaters, when the Ninth Doctor's Sin Eater became conscious due to the Doctor's telepathic nature, it mutated, showing the War Doctor's face, among other incarnations, straining against its body. The comic Breakfast at Tyrannies showed that failed attempts to duplicate the Tenth Doctor resulted in defective copies of all of his past incarnations being created, including one that resembled the War Doctor. The novelization of The Day of the Doctor reveals that when the Eleventh Doctor first examined his new face in a mirror, the voice of the War Doctor challenged his claim of only having 11 faces. The comic Outrun saw the Eleventh Doctor briefly retro-regenerate back into the War Doctor. However, due to this period of the Doctor's life being X-rated, this halted the process. The comic Dead Man's Hand saw Matrix projections of all of the Doctor's incarnations appear to defend him, including the War Doctor. However, he remained silent, with the Eighth Doctor defending his actions during the Time War. After entering his own time stream during the events of The Name of the Doctor, the Eleventh Doctor and Clara encountered the War Doctor. In what would become one of his first direct acknowledgements of that incarnation since the Time War. He's the one who broke the promise. 
However, after the events of Day of the Doctor and remembering the true timeline of events that took place during the last day of the Time War, the Doctor dreamt of all of his incarnations, including the War Doctor, finally showing a true acceptance of his war incarnation. The comic Petals later show that after being infected by pollen on the planet Eden, the Twelfth Doctor was able to fight off possession by summoning the memories of his past incarnations, including the War Doctor. And lastly, during the events of the audio story The Lost Magic, when exposed to energy from a time storm, the Twelfth Doctor degenerated through all of his past incarnations, including the War Doctor. The swirling energy intensified, and the Doctor cried out. He threw back his head, and it was lost in a blaze of brilliant light. When it faded, there was another man within the storm. He was wearing the Doctor's clothes, but had a fringe of floppy brown hair, an impressive chin jutting forward in pain. His body erupted into molten light. A second later, someone else was standing in the Doctor's jacket. A skinny man with dark, spiky hair, long sideburns and cheekbones to die for. His face changed again. Now the Doctor had piercing blue eyes, a long nose and short, cropped hair. The new Doctor reached for the Sonic, his body dissolving into light. Now he was much older with sad eyes and a scraggly beard. Need to complete the circle. And there we have it. At the time of recording, all known appearances of the War Doctor. Well, almost. Because you see, the Doctor's life isn't always straightforward, and there have been times when his life has dipped into alternate timelines. Thus far, the only known alternative timelines for the War Doctor are shown in the prologue of the comic Supremacy of the Cybermen, in this prologue, the War Doctor is seen in the barn at the beginning of the events of Day of the Doctor. However, due to the Cybermen plotting to take over history, the War Doctor was actually fighting them in the Time War rather than the Daleks. And finding himself cornered in the barn, he decides to detonate the moment, destroying both the Cybermen and himself in the process. And in the comic Four Doctors, the 10th, 11th and 12th Doctors are shown a moment in their time stream where the War Doctor, fighting as a young soldier for Gallifrey, could have become a Dalek slave. No doubt the War Doctor will make more appearances in future and as such there probably will be updated videos in future containing further information. But for now, any new information that appears will be listed in a pinned comment below. But that brings to a close another video and the first video in this new series. As always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out a lot. Be sure to go to the description below for a link to my Patreon. I'm doing my very first figure animation and you can get involved. There's exclusive content and rewards for those who do so and finding my Patreon in any way gets your name at the end of my videos. And don't forget to check my previous video because I am now selling custom head sculpts on Etsy. As I said, check out my previous video. You can find a link to my shop on that one. I salute you all and I will see you with another video very soon.